Hey guys, welcome to another video from Skinny Medics. I have an after action medical report video for you. You guys absolutely love these videos. YouTube hates them. So if you would do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. Just leave me a quick comment down below. That really helps me out. Also, because I'm showing graphic content, YouTube is more than likely going to demonetize this video. So it means I make zero off of this video. So today's sponsor is MedicalGearOutfitters.com. Yes, that is my company. We sell first aid kits, trauma kits, individual supplies, whatever you're looking for in the medical realm. We probably have it. You can go ahead and buy one of our pre-made kits or you can buy the individual supplies and build your own kit. We appreciate support at medicalgearoutfitters.com. I'll put a link down below. So this video was sent to me on Instagram. It looks like some officers are helping someone. I don't know if it's a suspect or what he is, but you can see an injury here to the lower leg and I don't know if you have a laceration or an open fracture here, being completely honest. So this is a quick warning here. We do have some little bit of blood, a little bit of graphic content. It's not terrible, but I will put a warning up here. Where yeah, there, what time is it? What time is it? No, you want me to call right, someone? My, right, right, my right, room right. is 200 on that gotta, Sunrise you know, Surfside Hotel right there. I would need one of y'all to come because I got kicked out of there. What do you got? 200 Surfside? Turn it on. 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 But you can see that we have an injury here to the lower leg. It looks like we have some bleeding right around the tibia, like mid shaft there. And then there's blood covering his socks and shoes. So I don't know if you have an open fracture or an ankle fracture down below there. Obviously, we'd like to expose that. Look and see what's going on here. But we can see the officers are applying a tourniquet. So first of all, let's talk about the positives. And then we'll move into what I think could probably be improved on this video. Number one is that they are wearing gloves. We see them using proper PPE, which is a great thing. A lot of times we don't see that on videos. And then we see them applying the tourniquet. You can see them turn the windlass. And then you can see someone hands a Sharpie over the right hand of the time. You can also hear dispatch calling out tourniquet as applied. So those are all great things. Where yeah, there, what time is it? What tourniquet? No, you want me to call someone? My, my room is 200 on that Sunrise you know, Surfside Hotel right there. I would need one of y'all to come because I got kicked out of there. What do you got? 200 Surfside? However, I don't necessarily know this needs a tourniquet. We see some bleeding, but it's not profusely bleeding. It doesn't look like it's bleeding that couldn't be controlled with direct pressure. There's no large pool of blood up under him. I don't necessarily know we need a tourniquet here. I think this is direct pressure with a pressure bandage is probably more likely the path that we should take here. The officers may not have that type of equipment, which is okay. Um, wish they did, but they may just have a tourniquet on them. Uh, but a pressure bandage here, and then let's use a pair of scissors, uh, EMT shears, and cut the shoelaces off, cut the socks off, and look, look, look and see what is going on with that ankle. If we're going to use a pressure bandage for this injury here, then when you wrap it and secure it, make sure you check for pulse motor sensory past the wound here to make sure you did not create a tourniquet. It is actually pretty easy to create a tourniquet with a pressure bandage because you're so wide there, you're making such a wide bandage that you can make a tourniquet. So after you apply your pressure bandage, just make sure you have pulse motor sensory in place. After we get the bleeding controlled here with a pressure bandage, direct pressure, take a look at the ankle, make sure we have pulse motor sensory past that injury. That's gonna be important for us. And if we do have a fracture, let's put it in a splint and take care of it that way. The other thing I see here in this video that I wasn't super crazy about is the tourniquet placement. No, I'm not going to say high and tight. This don't even comment that. Uh, but it's right on the knee. And I don't like that. Like, we should either go above or below the knee. Uh, you can absolutely put a tourniquet down on the double bone. At least, as long as it's at least three inches above the wound, you can put it on a double bone. So they could have went below the knee and been just fine. Or go above the knee if you want to hit on that femur area. Don't have to go high and tight on this wound if you're going to put a tourniquet on it. So you don't want to put a tourniquet over a joint, whether it be an elbow or knee, things like that. And then if you did have a fracture here, you don't want to put the tourniquet on top of the fracture. As a reminder, tourniquets are used for, oh my gosh, that's a lot of blood that we cannot control with direct pressure. It's pooling up, it's spraying, it's soaking up the clothing, things like that. And we cannot control direct pressure on the arms and the legs. 
that's when we, want, when we would like to apply a tourniquet. So I do appreciate these officers responding to this medical call. They seem super calm, which is awesome as well. Uh, but I think a pressure bandage would have been more likely the right treatment here. So thank you guys for watching. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember you need the right gear and the right training.